Welcome to another episode of James Explains, where today we are again taking a look at one of Matt Parker's mass puzzles. In this puzzle, we have a sheet of paper folded into eight sections, where the aim of the puzzle is to fold it in such a way that the stack of folded sections are in a particular order from top to bottom. To see the examples given, and for the original puzzle, check out the original video on the Stand Up Maths channel. The extended puzzle was to find out how many ways a stack can be folded to arrange the sections into different orders. To make things easier, we will number all of our sections from 0 to 7. Let's start by looking at what happens when we make a fold. As we fold the line between 0 and 1, the section numbered 1 disappears below the 0. If we are to remove the 0, we can see that section number 1 is now face down. If we limit section 0 to always being face up, no matter what other folds happen before or after, the only possible direction for section 1 to face is down. We can continue this pattern and see that with section 1 facing down, section 2 must face up, and therefore section 3 must face down too. If we make a fold along the horizontal line, you can see that sections 4 and 6 will be face down, and sections 5 and 7 will be face up. As well as this, all these lower sections will also be upside down. Try folding a piece of paper randomly for yourself, and you'll see that no matter what order you make the folds in, the individual sections will always face in these directions. Now that we know this, let's take a look at section 5. We can see that it will end up face up and upside down. So it should look somewhat like this once all the folds have been made. We can also see that it will also have a folded join with section 6 on the left edge of the stack, a folded join with section 1 on the bottom edge of the stack, and a folded join with section 4 on the right edge of the stack. If we have a look at our whole stack, we can check which folds will be on which edges. This can be checked by either taking each individual section from the earlier layout, rotating them and noting the edges, or by folding a stack and just checking where the folds end up. If you try this, you will see that on the left we have the fold between sections 1 and 2, as well as the fold between sections 5 and 6. On the right edge we have the folds between 0 and 1, 2 and 3, 4 and 5, and 6 and 7. On the bottom edge we have the folds between 0 and 4, 1 and 5, 2 and 6, and 3 and 7. So why is knowing where the folds are important to us? Well let's take a look at a theoretical example with four pages, A, B, C and D. We will say there is a fold between A and B, and one between C and D. We will also say that both these folds are on the left side of the stack. If we arrange the stack so that the order is A, B, C, D, we can show that there is one fold between A and B, and another fold between C and D. These folds are one atop another, so this should work fine. If we rearrange the stack so the order is now A, D, C, B, we can see the folds between A and B, as well as the fold between C and D. These folds are nested, but it still should work fine. Now, Let's rearrange it again, so the stack is ordered A, D, B, C. We can show the fold between A and B, but when we try and show the fold between D and C, we can see that the folds must overlap. Due to the limitation of paper in three dimensions, this is not possible to achieve. However, this could be something that is fun to make or do in the fourth dimension. Going back to our original stack of eight sections, we know that the zero section is locked into the first position. So what we need to do is check all permutations of the remaining seven positions. Luckily, this is only 5,040 different permutations to check. It might take a while to do by hand, but should be much quicker using a computer. But what exactly do we have to check about each permutation? Let's take a look at the example given by Matt Parker. Taking the section number of each letter in turn, we can see the order of the stack we are looking for is 0, 4, 5, 3, 7, 6, 2, 1. We also know that there are two folds on the left edge, 
4 on the right edge and 4 on the bottom edge too. Starting with the left edge, we can see there's a fold between 1 and 2 and another fold between 5 and 6. As these folds are separated, so far we don't have any problems with the order of this stack. Checking the bottom edge, we can see there are folds between 0 and 4, 1 and 5, 2 and 6, and 3 and 7. While some of the folds are nested inside other folds, none of them cross one another, so this stack order is still looking good. Finally, with the right edge, we have a fold between 0 and 1, 2 and 3, 4 and 5, and 6 and 7. In this case, we have even more nested folds, but again, none of the folds cross. So now that we have checked all the folds, we can say that this stack order is definitely possible. Now, for a contrary example, let's change around some of the positions. With a new order of 0, 1, 5, 6, 7, 4, 2, 3, we can demonstrate that the fold between 0 and 4 and the fold between 2 and 6 must cross each other. Whilst there are more folds in this permutation that are crossing, once we have found one, we know that the order is not possible and can discard it. So now that we know what we're looking for, we can check all 5040 permutations that are possible to see how many of them have no crossing folds. Whilst this is probably way too much work to do by hand, writing a simple program was able to find the following results pretty much instantly. If we substitute the numbers for letters, with 0 being A, 1 being B, and so on, we are left with the following possible starting positions for the folded paper challenge. To try to verify that we have found valid orders, we can take a look for the different orders presented in Matt Parker's video. First, we have the sample sheet shown at the start with an order of A, D, E, H, B, C, F, G. Then we have the first puzzle of A, H, G, D, B, C, F, E, and the second puzzle of A, H, B, G, D, E, C, F. So, if you've already managed to make the folds for the puzzles given in the original video, why not try to see how many more of these you can achieve? If you would like to see the original puzzle, or many more like it, visit thinkmaths.co.uk slash mathspuzzles. And if you have any suggestions on what else I should make a video on, or if you've found any flaws in the results I have shown, make sure you let me know in the comments section down below. As always, thanks for watching.